What yeah, you speak a lot and have great videos of teaching people how to produce in on their own, how to teach people how to do everything from from uh, record in certain styles to actually master their music. You have great guys on your channel that teach all those in, in those videos. But what if somebody just cannot produce good music at home by themselves? They, uh, I, and I only know this because I have hundreds of clients and or have through the years. And I know that just many of them just do as much as they want to. They are not able to create good music by themselves. They're just yeah. too, for whatever reason, and to some extent, I'm handicapped in, in, a, in a lot of ways because I'm kind of more on the jazzy side a lot of times or this or that. And so I do what I do, right? And um, it, it doesn't matter how good a, an experienced producer I am, it, it still might not be what, what people are looking for. But there are also people who are cr chronically amateur. I mean, it's not their fault. It's, it might be how they grew up, where they grew up, what equipment they're able to get what uh, songs or playing style that they just can't move away from guitar wise. It's just what it is. What do you do when someone just cannot produce music at home by themselves? I have an answer for this, but what's yours? Sure. I would say there's probably just three options for somebody like that. Um, and it goes from the, the one, one that'll take the longest one that won't be the, so long and one that you're not going to want to hear. Uh, <laughs> one that'll take uh, the longest is you've, you've got to just learn, you know, you're just going to have to dive into some t tutorials. You'll have to basically be uh, opening up your DAW every single day, even if it's just for 15 minutes, just getting familiar with things, um, listening to new music. That's actually a biggie, especially for those producers that might be a little bit older that are kind of still stuck in like an eighties or a nineties sort of uh, style. I, I definitely deal with a lot of those producers and I tell them you got to stop Stop listening to that music because I know, and I'm, I'm already guilty of that. I'm only 38, but I still listen to the music that I grew up in the early 2000s. And I'm already feeling like, man, I'm definitely turning into that where I just keep going back to that old stuff that I just grew up on, right? So we all do it. But you do have to challenge yourself to listen to new music, listen to new styles, get a new synthesizer, try some new things out. So that takes a long time though. That can take a couple of years to get really good at producing. So it's not a quick fix. The second and the much faster one is to partner with another producer. So if another producer can do things that you can't, but let's say you do have a skill set, you can play guitar, you can play keys well, you can whatever you can do. Um, then you might want to partner with a, another composer or producer. Even if all you do is you put together basically amazing transitional work, so it's like orchestral trailer music, and you can just do amazing work in terms of the risers and the falls and that kind of thing. It's not even really the music of it, but it's really, you can really sell it. Uh, and you find a composer that's you know not so great at that stuff, or they just don't have a big library of sounds they work with, and they're willing to partner with you on some sort of a split. Basically, partnering is, is you know, collaborating is gonna be the next best bet for you. And the third one is maybe, you know, sync licensing and creating music full time is just not for you, you know? And I actually put out a video about this uh, a couple months ago, which was like four ways to know when it's time to quit sync licensing because I've sadly seen a lot of my students have to quit after many months. And sometimes I kind of want to give them the sort of, hey, it might be the knock on the door for you to sort of exit now because you're so frustrated, you're hating life. Like this shouldn't be that, it's a challenge. It's not gonna be easy, I'm not gonna say that, but if you're depressed about music, you're depressed about your career, you just hate everything and you're getting bitter about it all, life is too short for this guys. Like hang it up, find something else. There are a million other ways you can do, you know, you can do cool things with your music. So um, those are my three answers at least. How about yours? Option number four, pay somebody to do it. In other words, you have a song, you think it's great. You think it'd be great for TV or whatever. It's in your head, <clears throat> but you're not a producer. You're not a songwriter. You're not even a, you don't even have a doll. Or if you do, all you could do with it is make a, a demo. Uh, and sometimes it's just a, or you have a phone, you can make a demo of your voice. I have been working for the past 22 years full time as a producer for a lot of people like this. And most of them are artists, right? Artists don't play things. They don't do anything. And, and if you think of yourself as a person who has good musical ideas or, or a, maybe a possible good idea for a, a, a song or something, and you can kind of hammer it out a little bit on your guitar or keyboard or whatever, it's not, there's nothing against, and this is totally 100% legit, hire a great producer to produce your music for you and partner with them to put it out or just pay them off and then and, and hot work for hire and then go out and do uh, and, and pitch these songs. Um, yeah, I do a lot of stuff in here for stock libraries. I mean, I can produce stock music all day because 
it is what it is. You know, it's a lot. It's it's again, it's music that needs to be used underneath certain things. But I will tell you that probably 75% of my stock of, of my music for sync libraries that's been accepted by sync libraries has been accepted because I used great players in Nashville and, and I produced it with people other than myself. So it's not a, I think people can approach sync licensing without producing the music themselves. And I think that um, this is probably something that you could do a video on as a person who I'm sure you have worked with people and help them produce something good uh, other than what they can produce. And um, I, I, yeah, then they have to spend money to do that. But guess what? They got to spend money on gear. They got to spend money on all sorts of stuff. So what's the difference in just being a smart person who comes up with decent ideas for songs or can work with a, another person? It's probably covered in your second one where you said get with somebody else and work with them. But I mean, you could do it totally uh, and just come to them with an idea. And then I, what I end up doing is taking that idea and taking it to Nashville or wherever and, and tracking it. <laughs> and so everybody looks great and uh, libraries are happy. And uh, I also get great singers. You know, I find Nashville singers, Orlando singers, Disney singers, singers on Sound Better. There are people out there who you can work with. So that's my answer for that question. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I actually haven't um, done any of that where somebody wanted to get into sync licensing and have me produce for them. So I did do some artists producing, you know, way back in the day. Um, but that was because they were trying to, you know, make hit songs, that kind of a thing. But um, yeah, if you got the means to pay people to put your music together for you and, and to, to take your ideas and put them in a tangible form, then yeah, that's actually a great, great way to do it. I, I think that's obviously just the biggest stumbling block for most people in that situation is to have, you know, that kind of money to be able to put, because, you, know, you know, putting together two tracks is, is great and you should definitely put together two tracks if you can, but two tracks does not make a full-time income, you know, for sync licensing. So sync licensing, I think probably the reason why I haven't sort of, sort of recommended that approach only because there is so much music you have to put out all the time. You know, it's a constant week, constant uh, monthly hustle. You got to throw out all this new music. So to have the money, and that's why people always ask me too, like, Hey, Jesse, um, do you think it's a good idea for me to pay somebody to master my music for me? I'm like, do you have a hundred bucks per track at the low end probably to get it professionally? That's like the probably super low end. Um, it's probably gonna be a lot more than that for a super high end mastering engineer. Like if you've got the funds for that, God bless you, go for it. But I don't think it's necessary. I think we've got the tools and the plugins these days to make it licensable. So I think people think because they're not a professional mastering engineer, they have to go pay somebody to do that because somebody told them that probably a mastering engineering company. So it's like, well, you know, libraries also aren't mastering engineer professionals either. They're just libraries. They might have somebody on staff that can do great mastering, but for the most part, they're just there to take high quality music and feed it to their clients. That's all they do all day long. So as long as your music is a thumbs up to them and a thumbs up to their clients, they don't care if you master that thing with Fruity Loops on a laptop <laughs> with using your headphones. They don't, they don't know how you master it. They don't really care. All they know is, damn, that sounds really good. And that's exactly what we need. So I, I definitely have more of the, you know, empower yourself. I think I, I'm biased towards that of like, learn to do it yourself, learn to master it yourself and save yourself a lot of money. But of course, you're absolutely right. There are those people that just for whatever reason, they don't have it in them and they just don't want to put in that effort to do that. So yeah, if you've got the money instead of the effort and the time, use that money. It'll work for you for sure. Well, especially since you have a lot of people coming into this as a second career down the road. And uh, this, that's the kind of client I've had through the years, but instead of sync licensing, they are trying to be artists. Well, it's harder than ever to be an artist in a world of a billion artists, you know? And so I, what I've been quote unquote selling clients on lately is why not double dip? Why not go ahead and make something that you want to make artistically, but then let's pitch that to li to libraries. I mean, that is, a, you have no other back end. What are you going to get back end off? off? I mean, Spotify probably won't take off. I mean, there's, the possibility exists. But, um, Sync licensing is a back end that you can have. And uh, so that's, that's one of those things I'm kind of saying, Hey, we finally have a back end for good, well, super well produced songs. And if you are, are someone who really enjoys, you wouldn't believe how many people out there, if you're watching this right now and you like want to make great music, but you're not a musician yourself. And I, and I know that there are people watching this that are on that level. So anyway, something to, uh, to think about.